The next generation Formula One cars for 2026 is nearing completion of its rules, and it will have a new overtaking help from the engine and active aero. But these huge changes also bring some problems for the teams, and unfortunately for the FIA, they've had a new scare in recent weeks. There is a deadline of June 2024 to approve and publish a first draft of the chassis technical requirements, which will accompany the engine standards that have been in place for a few years. But there have been doubts about getting things right before this date due to the new problems. So what is going on and will they be able to fix it in time? F1 will continue to use V6 turbo hybrid engines in 2026, but this underestimates the technological difficulty faced by the six registered manufacturers. Red Bull powertrains, Mercedes, Ferrari, Honda, Renault, and Audi. The single most notable modification is the elimination of the MGUH, which converts wasted heat to electrical energy and functions as a sophisticated anti-lag system for the turbocharger, but was judged too complicated with insufficient road relevance. The loss of the MGUH is offset by boosting power from the MGUK to 350 kW, or roughly 469 bhp, bringing the proportion between internal combustion engine and electrical power closer to 50-50. This has been established for a long time and remains unaltered, despite Red Bull's protests last year. Nonetheless, those restrictions are continually being tweaked. The most current versions contain an eye-catching new manual override mode, which, in oversimplified terms, gives drivers greater power at high speeds to aid in overtaking. While the FIA claims to be pleased with the weight characteristics observed in simulations from the 2026 cars, it acknowledges that some form of overtaking assistance is required. To that purpose, the drag reduction system is expected to be kept, along with additional active aerodynamics that adjust the front and rear wing settings on the straight, although this is insufficient given the characteristics of the 2026 cars. The concern is that by putting more efficient cars on the straight, they would have so minimal drag and be able to go at such high speeds that overtaking will become more difficult. The FIA believes that the drag characteristics of the 2026 cars will still produce a good tow effect, but the DRS impact will be diminished compared to what it is presently. There will be, in all likelihood, some form of the DRS, FIA single-seater director Nicholas Tombazis said. But we need to have between either aerodynamics or engine, some form of assist for overtaking. As much as we would rather have none of that, and have cars just able to be nose to tail and attack each other and so on, and that is the ultimate aim, we also don't want to have to be in a situation where we find they can't overtake, and cars will basically never be able to attack each other. We definitely can't risk to get in that position. When the car reaches 340 km per h, the MGUK deployment will slow down. This was computed together with the car's simulated drag profile. The low drag effect should be stronger at higher speeds, thus the quicker the cars drive, the less resistance they meet, offsetting the drop in electrical power. This should minimize severe decelerations on straights and provide the cars a comparable velocity profile to what they already have. However, it is possible that a chasing car will come to stagnate while pursuing another. With this in mind, the 2026 cars will be equipped with a manual override technology that drivers may use to have access to greater electrical power at the absolute top of the speed range. When the manual override is engaged, the MGUK will continue to deploy maximum 350 kilowatts power beyond 340 kilometers per h up to 355 kilometers per h. What hasn't been established is how long the override function will continue whether it will last a specific number of seconds even if the car stays in the 340 to 355 km per h speed range for longer, or how many times a driver may use it per lap or race. This will all be specified in the sports regulations once the final chassis rules are determined. The FIA's aim was to include the clause into the engine rules immediately. We're waiting to finalize a complete car package before we determine that, Tombazis said. But ultimately, we are very acutely aware that on the one hand, you do want to have cars racing closely and attacking each other. You do want to have cars overtaking each other, but you also don't want to make overtaking cheap or easy. It needs to be always in that level where it remains a challenge and remains something that gives you a degree of excitement when you see it, and not a banal sort of thing that happens all the time. The FIA believes that the combination of active aerodynamics and manual override is the best solution for setting up the car and engine characteristics while preserving the driver's traditional skills in order to avoid F1 becoming a large, automated energy manipulation exercise as the hybrid era progresses. 
there was also consideration of whether communication could or should be limited to ensure that the drivers remained in charge. But this was discarded, since the consequences would be insignificant. First of all, there's a lot of safety-related matters or other matters, such as you're impeding another car, you need to retire the car, or be careful there's an accident, Tombazis said. So, we can't realistically or sensibly stop this communication. The moment you allow some communication, then you can't be into deciphering any coding that may take place. What we're trying to do with the rules is to make sure that the main battle stays within a relatively narrow remit, that it still exercises the core skills of the driver. The core skill of a driver should not be, and should not become, who's the best strategist with their energy or something like that. It should still be about breaking late, reaching the grip limit, hitting the apex and so on and so forth, the traditional skills of the driver, those we want to preserve. Clearly, the more electrical power there is in a modern car, the more strategies come in play, but we've been trying to make sure that that doesn't become the dominating factor. We don't want Formula One to be all about how much energy you've got left and so on. We want it to always be drivers pushing, following each other, outbreaking each other, and going fast around corners. That's what we want to remain as the core basis of the sport. That is also why Tombazis believes it is overly simple to refer to the override function as a push-to-pass function, since he dislikes the suggestion that it would result in an easy overtaking. The goal is for the car behind to maintain gaining on the car in front, even when the toe and DRS are only partially effective, allowing drivers to come close enough to attack entering braking zones. This is essentially what the DRS is intended to do, albeit it should be highlighted that it is already overly powerful in several areas. Sometimes we get it wrong, Tombazi said, and sometimes on some circuits, we have drivers driving past each other. But this is not the objective, and it's also never going to be the objective in the future regulations. What we want is ideally drivers to be able to fight into corners and to outbreak each other and to have an exciting battle. This engine regulation is just there to give us to make sure we have enough tools at our disposal, once we finalize the complete car, to see that these battles happen. We'd never want to be like in some other series, where you just push the button and you go by like you're on the motorway. But as said earlier, there are concerns for the upcoming rules, particularly on the active aero side. After evaluating 2026 aero rules, sim drivers reported strange phenomena such as spinning out on straights under acceleration in low downforce configurations or being unable to go anywhere near flat out in what should be high-speed curves. Two significant problems arose from the recent modeling work. The first was to determine the minimum downforce level that an F1 car could achieve with the active aero in the lowest position. The second was answering a question posed by an anonymous team. This squad felt that the active aero could function with simply the rear wing moving, something F1 and the FIA were never convinced of. On the first question, significant work has been achieved in aero mapping and development, providing the FIA with the direction it requires to finish the active aero details. And on the second point about not having a moving front wing, the simulator runs, which featured those terrifying spins, provided a clear answer. Active aero could not include only the rear wing. As one source close to the development of the new rules said, it absolutely confirmed what we thought in the first place. All of the teams said, yep, you've got to adjust the front wing if you adjust the rear wing. It was no surprise to us. The simulator runs verified that F1's 2026 aero plans will need to include both front and rear wing movement, as well as a strategy for achieving the necessary aero balance. While certain technological aspects and regulation phrasing have to be worked out, it is believed that the essential foundation for active aero has already been established. Whereas when F1 first proposed active aero, there was room for four different wing states, extra downforce for following cars in corners, a normal state, a low drag state, and a DRS option, things appear to have settled on a much simpler solution. It is believed that the additional downforce element and DRS states have vanished, Instead, active aero will include cars having two states, a conventional setting for the car as it appears while stationary, and a low drag condition in which the wing angles decrease for the straights. The second stage is anticipated to be engaged automatically at specific points around the track to aid enhance peak speed, but how this works will have to be integrated into F1's sporting regulations rather than being a technical issue. By having dynamic aero zones, car performance can be modified and tuned for each circuit, 
to ensure that the cars give the optimum performance and spectacle. Discussions about the 2026 chassis rules proceeded during a meeting of F1's Technical Advisory Committee last week, and reports indicate that the FIA and F1 are on track to reach the end of June deadline for delivering framework chassis regulations. Some research is also being conducted to see whether it is possible in the long run to have the front wing have more than two states, allowing it to be better mapped for circuit needs. This would assist teams avoid having to invest more on aero elasticity, which they now utilize to help bend the wings on the straights and minimize drag. What do you think about these regulation changes? Will they spice up the playing field in 2026? And will the FIA be able to fight the current problems? Let me know in the comments down below.